Hi everyone, this is Rena. So this is a series of videos I'm doing on Venus and the different signs. And this video is for Venus and Capricorn. If you don't know where your Venus is, you can scroll down under this video and I have provided a link to a cafe astrology list of all the different dates when Venus went into different signs. It's very easy to find. You don't have to plug, you know, your information into anything. So Venus is how we love, how, you know, what kind of attitudes we have when it comes to romantic love, but also your friendships that can also fall into this category. It's also the type of art that you appreciate, the type of art that you create, what kind of interaction you have with art in general in your life, and also the way that you interact with money. Venus can uh, also be connected to money because it rules the second house of earned income and property and things like that. So all of those things can fall under this category. So when you think of Venus, Venus is the goddess of love. Venus is about the aesthetics, beauty in life and things like that. Love, romance, that poetry, music. And you think of Capricorn, Capricorn ruled by Saturn, discipline, order, ambition, 10th house of career. Does that sound like it goes together? very well. It actually doesn't. There's a sense of it not being well uh, fit, a good fit in, in certain ways. So a person with Venus and Capricorn has to really take that into consideration because their love nature may kind of veer into the area that is more cold and calculating in some cases where they're looking to a potential love partner to boost their status in society. And the typical term that we use for that is a gold digger, right? But it can be more subtle than that. It can be as simple as you're dating somebody or you meet somebody somewhere and say, what do you do for a living? Very casually. And the person says, I'm a doctor. And you're like, wow, I'm impressed by that. I mean, to, to yourself, you think that because you value people who have made something of themselves. That's just how you are wired. It's not really anything that you can change fundamentally. Well, I, I don't like to say things like that because I do believe that people can change even as you get older. But I do also believe in the archetypes of each sign, you know, what they represent and how it affects us. And I have to believe that we are born with the astrology that we're born under for a reason. And so I'm not about denying our influences at all, but just refining them, not just falling into the default lowest common denominator of whatever the sign is. So, or whatever the placement is like this. So that could be something not necessarily like you're just looking to marry for money, but you may be thinking in terms of yourself, especially if your son is in Capricorn as well, about your own goals in life. And so somebody who, let's say you are a son in Capricorn also, you're all about wanting to rise in your station in life. And you very pragmatically realize that the person that you end up marrying, because typically Venus and Capricorn will get married. They're not going to live with somebody. I'm not saying 100%, but you know. You're going, you really feel like that person can make or break you. You know, it's a team. It's not just you doing everything. So you want the best team uh, mate that you can get, the best partner. 
And it is looking at it almost like a business partner because you are very pragmatic. This is going to be true for everyone with Venus and Capricorn. You are very pragmatic in your life in general, um, where it relates to partnership. So if it's, if it's a business partner or a romantic partner or friendship, even in friendship, you may say, what can this person bring me? You know, what can they do for me? But I'm not saying that it's some kind of parasitical relationship where it's all about what they can do for you. You may be very uh, willing to scratch their back as well, but you just may look at it that way rather than just the blind romanticism that you might see with Venus and Leo where the person gets carried away on this wave of what love is all about the romantic um, sensibilities. This placement of Venus and Capricorn can lead somebody to marry, to be attracted to an older person, whether male or female. Okay. And really, I think that what's going on, first of all, Capricorn relates to old age uh, through, through Saturn. So there's a value, there's an attraction in people who are older, Venus and Capricorn may enjoy friendships with people who are older than they are. They may not really relate to their peers as much or value that kind of interaction with their peers and may prefer the company of older people even when they're teenagers. But there's that sense again of established, uh, somebody who is established in their life, which is very appealing to Venus and Capricorn. So it is like they're looking for a mentor. And in some cases, other people may look on the outside and say that person has daddy issues or mommy issues. And so they're looking for a surrogate parent. But really, it's more about valuing a person that they deem has experience in life. One thing that Venus and Capricorn has to learn is that there's no fool like an old fool. And just because somebody has more years on this planet than you do does not mean that they are wiser than you. And this is a stumbling block because Venus and Capricorn can do this in general of like, okay, this person has this uh, credential, so they are the legitimate source for this or that without like really getting to know what the person stands for, their beliefs, and seeing if they resonate with you. Being too concerned with the status symbols like degrees and pedigrees and all that stuff and valuing it from a, which I think is kind of a superficial angle because there's also the intuitive and someone might not have a degree in something, but they may be incredibly learned in that topic. And a Venus and Capricorn or a Capricorn in general person may poo poo it because uh, they should have gotten the proper diploma or whatever. And it, to me, that's short sighted. So in terms of, um, their attitude and love, it's going to be very practical, very pragmatic. This has the danger of becoming kind of business-like and not romantic. So this type of person has to kind of get an idea of what it means to be a romantic person and to be able to express that within the realm of relationship. There may be a tendency to gravitate towards material tokens of affection, like giving somebody a diamond bracelet instead of just a writing a simple poem from the heart that expresses their love for that person. They may kind of be cut off from love and just look in terms of the du dutiful aspect of a relationship, which Capricorn, whether it's sun or Venus or the moon sign may 
engage in relationship as a sense of like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do, rather than really appreciating it for its own value, rather than in the confines of what it represents, like the structure. So for instance, a parent of a Capricorn parent, Venus and Capricorn moon sun may care for their child because that's what they're supposed to do. But that sense of I love you for yourself and it having nothing to do with the nature of their relationship, that may get lost in translation. And obviously the person may actually feel that deep down inside, but they may not feel that it's necessary to express that. And they may not even be conscious of that feeling within them. The sense of duty may be so strong that they are more expressing that and conscious of that. There's a traditional quality to Venus and Capricorn because Capricorn is a conservative and, you know, traditional sign. It's connected to the father. So you can say by extension, it's connected to family life. And so somebody with Venus and Capricorn may very well fall in love looking at their partner as to whether they would be a good parent. And so they will tend to gravitate towards other people who exhibit similar types of traits of being more traditional, being more practical, so that they can have a, an orderly family life. In terms of their sexual expression, Venus is more of the romantic side, but of course, by extension, we always include that. So that may indicate somebody who can be cold or detached, we would say, but they can exhibit a sensuality in private because all, all earth signs can be very earthy, but in public, they may not all show it. Now, this is also true for Virgo, Venus and Virgo, not so much with Taurus because Taurus is ruled by Venus and it it's more uh, laid back in that sense, but there may be more of a facade with Venus and Capricorn. So the person who looks like, I'm, I'm thinking of a woman who looks like Miriam the librarian in public and, and very conservative and a freak in the bedroom. <laughs> I don't mean a freak, but you know what I mean? Just somebody who's much more, um, adventurous behind closed doors. And in terms of their relationship to money, a Venus and Capricorn person, regardless of sun sign, will be more financially conservative. So when you're talking about the more free spending signs, like Sagittarius, and um, well, I think that's about it with some of those signs, maybe Pisces in some cases, they will be more saving and they, but they will spend money if something is of quality that they know it's long lasting. So the difference is you sometimes get people who spend money on clothes, but they, they focus on the designer label, not knowing that they're made in some sweatshop somewhere and that they're really not well-made clothing. They're just trying to cash in on the, on the name so that people that are not educated about this can just automatically go for this label. And a Venus and Capricorn will research and they will find out what is the best quality and they will spend top dollar, but they're just not going to buy something that's flashy, that is cheap crap that will not stand the test of time. And their love of art goes along the same lines. What has stood the test of time? What type of music? Is it the latest fad or is it classical music? So they may have a uh, preference for traditional forms of music and other art forms and antiques. That can be something because that deals with age that they may invest in or maybe sell. So let's talk about the different sun signs. With the sun in Scorpio, this will increase their 
ability to manage money with Scorpio. There could be investment um, talent and they're going to be even more traditional. I would put Scorpio. Scorpio can be kind of a wild card because even though it's a water sign and I tend to th see the water signs as more traditional, they do tend to be a little bit resistant to fitting into a specific box. So this can give the Scorpio, maybe tame them a little bit and make them more traditional, more likely to want a family. Scorpio is very fertile in terms of the creative principle. And also this can make the Scorpio person more detached in love and their sexual expression where they are able to, especially with, I, I won't say sexual expression because Scorpio doesn't, isn't like, like that. Scorpio can be, can uh, not get into sex when they're not emotionally moved. And this just makes the Sun and Scorpio person less emotional when it comes to romantic relationships. With Sagittarius, this can give a little bit of an influence of traditional values and maybe more family oriented, more likely to settle down. However, perhaps more calculating. Sagittarius tends to be a puppy dog, very open, not scheming. And this can make the person more materialistic and possibly looking for a partner to give them the good life. But they can be more serious about their relationship. And so that can be a plus. With the sun in Capricorn as well as Venus in Capricorn, you have to watch out for a tendency to be too materialistic. One thing I should have said, though, is that if Venus is afflicted, if it has a lot of hard angles to it, the person can be a little bit too concerned about materialism, material concerns. But with the sun in Capricorn, money can just overtake everything. So the relationship just devolves into this thing of like, well, this is my, these are my possessions. These are your possessions. And uh, like the War of the Roses type of thing, where it's just like they decide to part and it becomes an ugly divorce all about what I brought into the marriage, what you brought into the marriage. But this person will take love very seriously. It is like a duty to them. They will definitely have a practical attitude towards love. They see it as something that has to be done right. It has to have order to it. It can't be chaotic. And that could lead to a lack of romantic sensibilities. And so having that, even if you have to impose it within yourself and it doesn't come naturally, just being mindful of that because of the other person, unless you're with somebody who's like a Virgo and they're not really that concerned about romance and they, maybe they have Venus and Virgo too. Another thing that Sun and Capricorn and Venus and Capricorn may fall into the trap of doing is being snobbish. And again, this is that status seeking nature. This may be an overweening concern, desire for this double Capricorn placement. So it has to be really looked at. And one of the things I could say to the, that you that have this is understand what love is really about. Love is really about being able to feel comfortable with your partner and to trust that person with all of your secrets, with your 
vulnerabilities. It's not about these outer things. People who do put too much emphasis on that, they usually end up in a negative situation. One more thing that I wanted to say too about Venus and Capricorn, which is something I should have said at the beginning, is that there's a tendency to look to that older partner as a mentor, but when the person gets older, they may go for the younger person. I'm glad I'm at least saying this with the sun in Capricorn, because an example Capricorn would be, let's say you're a beautiful, younger Capricorn woman with high cheekbones, because that tends to be what a Capricorn woman has. I'm thinking of somebody like Faye Dunaway. I think she's a um, sun in Capricorn, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, you marry an older man and he admires your be beauty. Now he may be wealthy. I'm talking about a wealthy older man. Okay. He admires your beauty. So you're like arm candy and he's like daddy Warbucks, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And so the relationship runs its course because there's no real love there. It's just like mutual using. So eventually you get to be a certain age, you hit the wall, and all of a sudden you're back out in the single world. Now you may get a nice little lump sum from Daddy Warbucks, and now it's your turn to be the cougar, and you may look for a younger partner that you can be the mentor for now that you have this so-called wisdom being the older person. So that's sometimes how it rolls. Um, <laughs> so for what's that, for what that's worth, if your son is in Aquarius, this is your ruler along with Uranus, Saturn, this Capricorn influence. So it may increase that materialistic tendency. So that's something to watch out for because Aquarius is a very freedom loving sign and it tends to be very independent and nonconformist. But Saturn is more of a conformist type of an energy because it's all about tradition. What has come before? I think of the Hierophant in the major arcana of the Tarot, but it's not connected to Saturn. I just think of that because it's like, okay, these are the structures of society. I want to fit into this because they are tried and true. Even though, you know, revolutions do occur, people still take comfort in structure and you may as well. I don't think this is a romantic connection in terms of our combination. So that's something to watch out for depending on who you fall in love with, because you may not express it in the way that they need you to, and they may feel like you don't care, that you're too cold. You may be more inclined to settle down, start a family. And as I said, Aquarius can be very independent. And in general, you may be kind of disinclined to do that. So that may make you more open to such an arrangement. In terms of money, as I said, it can increase your concern about it, but I don't think it's going to increase your spending habits. You tend to be quite reserved in that regard. So there you go. With the sun in Pisces, I think this grounds Pisces people, makes them less impractical. Pisces can be an impractical sign. Pisces can have a tendency to be super romantic, but not necessarily discerning in who they give their affections to. This can give you more of a, a sense of the importance of picking the right person. So that's what I mean by grounding. Make you more have more common sense in that regard. And in terms of art, I think that in general, because Pisces is so artistic, this may give you more discipline to create. It's not that it would necessarily influence the type of art that you do, but it may give you the discipline to actually be regular in your production of your art. 
this is really getting back to the actual love part of this. This is a good balance of realism and romance where you may still retain your romantic nature, but you can see things more clearly. You may choose a partner who is well suited for you, who may be a good compliment to you. And you may be more constant. Sometimes I think Pisces people are fickle in love because you're a mutable water sign. You're so easily influenced by the next person you meet down the line that you might forget about the other person. Not It's nothing malicious. You just love the one you're with, you know? So this may make you more connected to a specific person because Saturn, that Saturn influence can be structure to your love life. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you'd like a private reading, I have uh, some links below that give you an idea of some of my prices. These are not all of my readings, but some of the ones that I do on a regular basis and also direct links to them if you're interested. Otherwise, good luck to you. Take care. Bye.